Let's try a simple experiment. Close your eyes and say to yourself, I wonder what my next thought will be. Then, stay very alert and wait for the next thought. Did you notice that you had to wait for quite a while before a thought popped up? Exactly. When you are in a state of intense presence, you're thought free. You're calm but highly aware. As soon as your attention drops a bit, thoughts flood in, and the calmness disappears. You're back in your thoughts and out of the present moment. Some Zen masters surprise their students by approaching quietly and suddenly hitting them with a stick. If a student were fully present, they'd have noticed the master and avoided the hit. Getting hit means being lost in thought, absent-minded. In a way, being present is like waiting. It's a different kind of waiting that demands your complete alertness. Something could happen any moment, and if you're not fully awake and still, you might miss it. In this state, all your attention is in the now. There's no room for daydreaming, thinking about the past, remembering, or anticipating the future. Be like a servant waiting for the return of the master, Jesus suggests. Just as a servant doesn't know when the master will come, staying alert and still is crucial to not miss the master's arrival. In another story, Jesus talks about five inattentive, unconscious, women who lack enough oil, consciousness, to keep their lamps burning, stay present. Consequently, they miss the bridegroom, the now, and the wedding feast, enlightenment. In this context, inattentiveness is akin to unconsciousness, oil is a metaphor for consciousness, the burning of lamps corresponds to staying present, the bridegroom symbolizes the now, and the wedding feast represents enlightenment. These five contrast with the five wise women who stay conscious and prepared. If, if you've ever felt this way, especially during moments alone in nature, it's quite common. Zen masters call it, Satori. Satori isn't a lasting change, but when it happens, appreciate it, it offers a glimpse of enlightenment. You might have experienced it without recognizing its significance. Presence is crucial to notice the beauty and sacredness of nature. Have you ever gazed at the vastness of space on a clear night, amazed by its stillness and unimaginable expanse? To truly perceive such things, the mind must be calm. Beyond external beauty, there's something more, something indescribable, a deep, inner, holy essence. Explore it and discover for yourself. The longer it takes for you to think about something after seeing it, the more aware you are as a person. Simply saying, that's a nice flower, is just a quick mental reaction. When people don't take the time to be still and fully present, they don't truly appreciate the beauty of a flower or feel its essence and significance. Many modern works of art, architecture, music, and literature lack true beauty and inner essence, with only a few exceptions. This happens because the creators struggle to free themselves from their constant thoughts. Everything that exists has a presence, a divine essence, and some level of consciousness. Even a stone possesses basic consciousness, otherwise, it wouldn't exist, and its atoms and molecules would break apart. All things are alive. The sun, the earth, plants, animals, and humans are all different expressions of consciousness at various levels, with consciousness taking the form of these entities. The world comes into existence when consciousness takes on different shapes and forms, both as thoughts and physical entities. Just consider the countless life forms on our planet, underwater, on land, and in the air. Each type of life form is replicated numerous times. Why does this happen? The ancient seers of India pondered this question and viewed the world as, Leela, a divine game played by God. In this perspective, individual life forms are not the focal point of the game. In the sea, many life forms don't survive more than a few minutes after birth. The human form also turns to dust relatively quickly, and once it's gone, it seems as if it never existed. Is this tragic or cruel? Only if you perceive each form as having a separate identity, forgetting that its consciousness is an expression of God essence taking a particular form. You, you truly understand this only when you realize your own God essence as pure consciousness. Imagine a fish born in your aquarium. You name it John, create a birth certificate, share its family history, and then, within two minutes, it gets eaten by another fish. This might seem tragic, but it's only so because you projected a separate self onto it. You took a fragment of a dynamic process, a molecular dance, and turned it into a distinct entity. Consciousness distorted and becomes so intricate that it entirely loses itself. 
In today's humans, consciousness is fully identified with these forms, knowing itself only as the physical or psychological shape it takes. This state gives rise to the EGOIC mind, leading to significant dysfunction. It might seem like something went wrong in evolution, but even this is part of the divine game or Leela. The EGOIC mind lives in constant fear of the loss or annihilation of its physical or psychological form. However, this suffering eventually will become a catalyst for consciousness to disentangle itself from these forms. This shift will bring a deeper level of self-consciousness than before. When consciousness breaks free from its identification with physical and mental forms, it transforms into what we can call pure or enlightened consciousness, or presence. This transformation has already occurred in a few individuals and appears likely to happen on a larger scale, although there's no absolute guarantee. Failure to liberate oneself from the mind may lead to destruction, manifesting as increasing confusion, conflict, violence, illness, and despair. The collective EGOIC mind is described as the most dangerously insane and destructive force on the planet. Many people briefly revert to a state of consciousness below thought during sleep, and some experience this to some extent through activities like sex, alcohol, and drugs. However, excessive reliance on these substances would only magnify the evident insanity of the human mind. Then, if deprived of these crutches, a significant portion of the population might become a threat to themselves and others. Widespread use of these substances also might delay the breakdown of the old mind structure, it also postpones the emergence of higher consciousness. While individuals may find relief from the daily challenges imposed by their minds, consciousness is evolving across the universe in countless forms. So, even if we don't succeed, it doesn't hold much significance on a cosmic scale. Any increase in consciousness persists and finds expression through other forms. Silence holds an even greater power as a conduit for presence. As you read or hear me speak, pay attention to the silence between and beneath the words, the gaps. Being aware of these pauses, especially in noise, offers a simple and direct path to being present. Even amid noise, there is always some silence underneath and between the sounds. Tuning into the silence brings about stillness within you. It's only in your stillness that you can perceive the silence around you. And what is stillness but presence, consciousness liberated from thought forms? This is the living realization of what we've been discussing. If you find yourself drawn to an enlightened teacher, it's because there's already enough presence within you to recognize it in another. Conversely, many people are drawn to false teachers because egos are attracted to bigger egos. It's important not to believe that the light is only external or that it can only manifest through a specific form. If only your teacher is an incarnation of God, then who are you? In the realm of presence, there's no sense of, mine, or, yours, presence is one. Engaging in group work can amplify the light of your presence. When a group of people comes together in a state of presence, it creates a collective energy field of significant intensity. This not only elevates the level of presence in each member but also contributes to freeing the collective human consciousness from its current disturbances. However, unless at least one member of the group is already firmly established in presence, the EGOIC mind can easily resurface and undermine the group's efforts. In summary, this chapter explores the nature of presence, emphasizing the importance of intense awareness and the pitfalls of succumbing to the EGOIC mind. It suggests that the divine game of existence involves transcending separate identities and recognizing the interconnected consciousness in all life forms. The narrative underscores the transformative power of silence, the potential for individual and collective enlightenment, and the ongoing evolution of consciousness across the universe.